Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Hive Mind After Hours podcast. Today we have Spirit Leaves joining us for this episode. How are you guys hello, doing hello. Tonight? What's up? What's up? What's Thank you for feeling? Taking the time to talk to us about your new music and all sorts of other things that I'm sure we're going to get up to tonight. Unfortunately, Derek was last minute not able to be here tonight because of a work deadline that got pushed on him and had to get done today. When originally that wasn't going to be the plan. So unfortunately, Derek's not here. Rip. Justin and Jacob are uh, the three of us are going to be holding down the fort for the Hive Mind crew. Ah, uh, you can't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't lock you behind the paywall. <laughs> <laughs> You've tried. We certainly have. <laughs> All right, before we get proper into the discussion, uh, early episode reminder: be sure to follow us and the guys at Spirit Leaves on social media. You can follow us at Hive Mind Radio underscore on Instagram and Twitter. Hive Mind Radio on YouTube, Hive Mind Recap Podcast on Spotify and other podcast platforms. And you guys are just uh, Spirit Leaves FL on Instagram, if I'm not mistaken? Yes, I think we're Spirit Leaves FL everywhere at this point. Pretty sure. Cool, cool. Much easier than I, I like us Leaves having FL. a different name for like every platform imaginable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We Well, it was like, it was one of those things where we were trying just to do just Spirit Leaves. And then, like, that was not working on every platform. <laughs> so we had to change it to the FL at some mm. point because it was just, like, easier. It happens. It happens. Well, uh, with that, I guess we can get proper into the discussion tonight. Let's just start talking about music, I guess. Uh, this episode is coming out right after the release of your brand new single, Sky on Fire. So uh, we've obviously, thank you for giving us a chance to listen to that early so we can talk about it here and uh, have this episode go out. And- and schedule with that release uh I, let's start by just talking about the new song since obviously i'm sure that's on people's minds anyone that's listened to this interview probably wants to hear about the new song so just talk about the song i guess like what what inspired the song any influences like whatever you want to say um about the song yeah okay i guess we could i could i could probably tell the story about how the song came together because this really so the of all the new songs that we're going to have coming out, uh, what is it? This is Geo's baby. This is not my baby. Geo and uh, Geo, J- Donnie, and then our original bass player were the ones who came up with this song idea. Uh, Geo had sent us a demo. I think I remember pointing out, I was like, that's it. That's cool as hell. And then I think I came over, what is it? It had to have been like a week later. I just came over one day to rehearsal and they had it like, they had like the whole thing done with like these really cool acoustic guitars. And like all this stuff, um, yes, that's a thing actually in the song. There's acoustic guitars in the song. Um, But they were way more pronounced, I think, in the original demo that we uh, that that I had heard. And um, I think, you know, with some time I started adding vocals, but we were kind of just we were having some trouble, like just kind of getting everything to sort of, I don't know, like mix together. I was having some trouble writing vocals and stuff for this one. and I do remember, like, at some point I went home and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do something crazy. And then we, we added, like, this 80s, like, kind of sound to it, the little 80 synths and all that. Because um, that's something that I, I do a lot of. And um, I remember I came, I came back and that just kind of changed the whole vibe. And we finished the song, I think, right in time as we were going to Nashville to record the new songs. Like, this was just, like, this was finished days before we left, if not, like, a day before. And, uh, yeah, we went, we put the song together, um, and, uh, it just, it just came out fucking amazing. John just took it to like a whole new level and kind of like took a lot of those like acoustic and lighter elements and stuff and really pushed like the whole eighties sound or not, I, I keep saying the eighties sound. I don't know what, whatever the whole synth production Eddie stuff, pop. he kind of pushed that. Eddie pop. Yeah. Synth wave. Yeah. He pushed that like way forward. Um, and uh, and that just ended up becoming like the the glue for the song that kind of just like just gave it the the uh, what is it the zhuzh as I as uh, one of my friends would say he likes to call it the zhuzh the sauce. so yeah the sauce, the sauce. yes no, I was gonna say so, it, like gave the song identity but I don't think that's the point you were trying to make by saying that it, you gave it the sauce <laughs> it is some yeah. it is some real good sauce yeah yeah no it's um it it, it definitely it definitely gave it like that i that identity and it was funny too because we were trying to mix the both in and then john just like just put those synths up and then it was like immediate like immediately clear like okay like that's what we're doing with the song um we even like what is it i know that me and geo were 
we didn't have like arguments or anything like that, but I was like, oh, should there be vocals for the second verse? And then he wrote this solo and then I kept going, I don't know, is this going to work? And blah, blah, blah. And then like by the time we got to John's and like we had heard the song the way that it was intended to be heard to us, we were like, yeah, the solo's fucking staying, dude. Because that was that was kind of, that was the thing that kind of brought it all together. But yeah, we, I think that was a big thing that we were all worried about. We were like, man, are are we taking too many vocals out here? But no, that, that, that was... Uh, that's one of my favorite parts of the song now. I love that it goes into that. And I think that like the general reaction, like from friends and people that we've shown is like, they never like, they're not expecting like that at all. They're like, Oh yeah. shit, a solo, you know? So yeah. that was, um, yeah. You know, we, we did a little bit of that in chaos control. Like, you know, we did do like a little solo there. Um, but I think like that was more like we wanted to do that. This just kind of happened, you know? And, uh, and, it, and then it stuck, you know? So, yeah that's kind of the story you know um but i will say that like these these new songs and and you know and all that uh we we definitely did a, a, like a lot of different experimental things like uh, empty flame for instance which just came out um a, a, again was really experimenting a lot with like synths and all of that sort of stuff i think that like going forward with spirit leaves one of my like goals with this band is like I want there to be times where you can't tell if it's a guitar or if it's a synth. Like I want that dirty kind of sound um, with like synth production and stuff. Uh, definitely inspired a lot by what is it? I would say like Mick Gordon and things like that. I would say that like a lot of these new songs are sort of taking some notes from him for sure. Um, and uh, you know, and then just the you know other general influences. I know that like the solo Geo was definitely channeling a lot of that polyphia energy you know those sorts of things um and then for me i was just trying to channel like this just sounded very pop to me so i was like okay i gotta go full r&b kind of pop style on the you know on sky and fire and stuff and uh and, the, and that's kind of just you know this, this kind of the identity and like how that sort of stuff formed and how we kind of put it all together now that you mentioned the r&b thing i was definitely gonna say that like guitar solo bridge section reminds me of nightlife quite a bit like, there's some nightlife influence oh absolutely I I with nightlife so hard i've been fucking with them for a long fucking time uh i i love them so much so yeah no definitely uh definitely not out of the realm of possibility there i was also like a big issues fan as well growing up so mm. like all of that stuff makes a lot of sense uh i think that like because like i grew up on metal and i was in metal bands and then at some point i started working in pop r&b and hip-hop so when i came back and with, when this band formed, it was like a really like natural thing of like, well, I've been doing this for longer than honestly, I've been in a metal band at this point. So that was kind of like our whole, our whole stick was to just put that stuff in there. But, you know, shout out to Issues who were really kind of the, like the people who led that whole movement. And what was me as well, you know, same members. So if Derek was um, here right now, he, he would be so on board with everything you're saying about Issues, if only. He's the resident issues fan. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's a it's a shame they're not making more music. I want them to. I I want to yell at all of them and be like, dude, just get it, just get a fucking singer and get get out there again, make some music. Mm -hmm. uh, I love all it, of them. Was it Brian from a uh, home team? I think he filled yes. in really well. No, he did. He did a fantastic job um, on that on that tour. Yeah, no, he was super super spot on with all of that stuff yeah i think if they could find like a like a new singer um they could totally go back out and do some stuff you know especially with what they were doing on beautiful oblivion i um, i absolutely agree. believe yeah i absolutely believe they continue in that direction which I, you know they can if they get sky and 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 ty and uh you know well all those guys they wrote the music uh, i i believe anyways like yeah if they can get that back together dude just find a new singer who can chop up some serious R&B um, stuff and you're fucking golden. Actually, for a while before they got back together on the tour that they did with Brian, I was screaming from the heavens for Hansel to do, uh, mm. to, to fill in that spot. I think that he would do a wonderful fucking job. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I definitely agree. It's like, um, I think it's Silar is the band I'm thinking of as well with like that kind of post-hardcore kind of R&B type style to it Ooh, silar oh yeah i remember more, more i remember rappy. silar yeah yeah I yeah they were 
one of the yeah, vocalists like, teased new music was it last year it was like that's why i remember him but that's definitely that kind of like rap kind of post hardcore type style that i think really issues kind of ran with oh yeah 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 i actually i remember silar well my thoughts on silar was they sounded like sworn in that was mm-hmm. kind of like my that that was what I thought of that, but with a little bit more of like a rap edge on them. Mm-hmm. Definitely agree. So you were mentioning the uh, the guitar solo in uh, "Sky on Fire." Um, that's also one of my favorite parts. I really liked how it kind of separated the the song quite well. Um, do you? notice that guitar solos don't pop up in a lot of mainstream music much anymore do you feel like they're um falling out of favor a bit yeah i do i've believed that for ever personally mm. um i mean at least like since i've been listening to music i mean i grew up like when lincoln park and new metal was like all coming in and system of a down and three days grace and event sevenfold and i mean events had their solos and stuff but like outside of them really like um and you know a few others i would say that yeah it's it's kind of fallen out of favor um I, in, in some respects it depends what you're listening to um but at least in terms of like mainstream music absolutely so like i do make it like kind of a I've been doing it for a long time in my music like even outside of uh spirit leaves like to put like guitar solos and stuff um so, yeah, when when the solo idea did come up, I, I didn't shy away from it at all. I was like, let's do it. You know, that was um, I know it was like a point of contention because it was like, you know, it was either do a second verse vocally or do the solo. And we were kind of worried about it because like the chorus is really poppy and stuff. And we were like, well, this is is this something that really needs to be there? Um, but, you know, in the end, we kind of like cho- chose that. But, yeah, I definitely believe that it has uh, fallen a bit out of the mainstream appeal outside of like some key acts right like i think polyphia has broken through quite nicely mm-hmm. um and they're they're all instrumental but even then like a lot of those you know a lot of bands like that you know if they if they break through it's more of an anomaly than yeah than anything definitely. you know yeah though i feel like the only prominent like scene metal band that's doing guitar solo still is novelist like okay. I feel like you you occasionally see a guitar solo in like a couple other songs every once in a while, but I feel like Novelists are the only band that like consistently is still doing, it. and like not in every song, but like more frequently than most. I'm yeah. gonna be. I, I, I kind of miss it. I kind of miss it. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. we try to put like one solo every uh <laughs> every piece of music, I guess, like every um like group of art you know because uh we had one solo for the ep and then for this like for these singles we wanted to kind of do like another thing or like another solo as well kind of just add one in there not on purpose yeah. we were we were so in between and we were like do we do the solo do we not do we do the solo do we do the solo do we not do the solo and then we were like honestly you know what it fucks let's do the solo it does fuck yeah, yeah. But I think that speaks to a lot of like the state of guitar so is the fact that there is like even so much deliberation on whether or not you want to do one. Yeah. Yeah, I think the I think the other thing too is like the way that people write music a lot. Um and I would, you know, group ourselves in this like you know, you don't you don't see a lot of bands at all really releasing just like 5-6 minute songs like, you know, mm-hmm. like you you sort of used to hear, right? You sort of you know, like Led Zeppelin would take their time getting into a song or Metallica would take their time yeah. getting into things. And, and, you know, you know, generally speaking, a lot of their songs are a lot longer, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I, I just, you know, I think it's just the way people make music and the trends that have happened. It's just kind of gone that way. Um, yeah. you know, for everything better is for shorter worse, now. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Everything is definitely shorter. And, you know, a lot of that is, uh, I mean, I don't want to say a lot of that is social media. You can say that, but, you know, you can't be too sure. Um, so. Oh, it's definitely social media, for sure. See I, see, I would argue, but I have the attendance span of a goldfish, so that doesn't really help my <laughs> argument. <laughs> it's dopamine. Yeah, t- TikTok <laughs> has definitely, like, shaped music in a weird way to make everything shorter and hooks immediately. There's no, like, 
there's no like growing into a song anymore. It's like the song starts and immediately you're hearing the underlick and you're hearing the fucking the hook like within the first 15 seconds. And then, you know, if it's not in the first 15 seconds, then labels look at you like fucking dumbass. Like, what are you doing over here? Not putting the hook in there immediately, you know? And it's so sad because like, I'm very hit or miss on like the long songs that have these like drawn out buildups or like long guitar solo sections on them but when they're done well they are some of my favorite songs ever yeah i i feel like a lot of a lot of music is is missing um dynamics now honestly like i i personally like songs where it's like one big ass build up into one big ass chorus and yeah, right. the whole thing just fucks you know this guy likes sleep token i, I can tell <laughs> yeah, I, I do like sleep token that is true yeah i was yeah, not sold sleep on token sleep token for a long time yeah our uh our guitar player geo uh got us into sleep token into the lore that is sleep token and uh yeah now we all kind of are like okay yeah this band is fucking dope yeah they're on I, another level like i don't love yeah. some of their songs like on an individual basis but i can't deny like the talent and like the like lore that they've created like this they definitely to definitely the cannot deny that but i would say it was a very hard sell i don't i'm not sure like i'd have to go back and listen but i'm not even sure i was a fan of the of the last album before the take me back to eden because oh. like it, i just i because Geo would just jam this whole album. Like, uh, we, we, we were road tripping in Nashville. Like, I would just listen to this and I was just like, I mean, like, it's not bad, you know? Like, I was like, I just don't think this is like my kind of thing, you know? And, that's, that's and then I heard. <laughs> that's my favorite <laughs> album of all time. Yeah. No, it, it, no I just get it. Hear Jake slowly di- Jacob slowly dying. <laughs> no, yeah. it's, it's okay. I mean, like, I, I, like, honestly, I get it now because of vor vor was the song that where i finally like something cracked like something mm-hmm. finally came through i was like wait is this actually kind of fucking awesome because like that song just i don't know that just it just hit me one day i just listened to it at the right time and i was like okay i was like i think i get what's going on here and why people why people like this because even when i even when i first heard the summoning which is like you know the song that blew them up i didn't understand it i was kind of like I mean, like, you know, the R&B part's kind of cool, you know? I'm like, but yeah. it wasn't like, but I wasn't like super impressed. Like I, I got it. Like I listened to like a ton of R&B music and I was and, and it just like it. I don't know. The first time I listened to it, I just didn't get it. I was just kind of like, this is kind of mediocre for compared to comparatively to what I hear. But when you stop kind of comparing it and when you stop kind of like doing that stuff and you kind of take it for what it is like and, and now that's by the way, now it's one of my favorite songs. Um, You know, I think like I don't know. It's it's a grower. I think that's what I what I should be saying. It's it's a it's it definitely grew on me a lot. It, it's it's not a shower. It's a grower. <laughs> that's what I was trying not to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he was going with it. Everybody. Um. No. I. I. The way. I, the way I. Uh, I describe sleep token. It's like it's dark chocolate. You know. It's it's an acquired taste. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, get I think that. I I think that people. Like I, I, what I really think it is is his vocals. I think that his vocals like need to grow on some people, and like for some people it's just not it. But um, but you know, if I think if you listen to it long enough, you kind of they kind of grow on you, and then you're like, oh okay, yeah, this band is actually fucking dope. Yeah, kind of. Uh, that's, that's how I feel about uh. I'm sorry, what? No, 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 no. Go on, go on. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say that's that's kind of how I feel about Delta Sleep too. I don't know if you guys know about like math rock at all, but oh, um, yeah. Delta Delta Sleep. Delta Sleep is like kind of in that same realm where you like you kind of have to let the vocals grow on you a little bit, and then you're like, oh, okay, I fuck with this band, you know. Hmm. Oddly enough, I I think that his vocals were the one thing that did stand out to me, where I was like. Like, I think I was kind of in the same boat where I didn't like it, but I also, as a vocalist, understood. I'm like, man, nobody has that voice, though. Like, nobody, nobody's yep. doing yeah. that. Or, like, no, nobody has that, like, kind Bastille. of. Bastille. What's up? Bastille has that voice. <laughs> Who? Bastille? Bastille. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. That's like indie. I'm talking, like, I don't know, for metal. <laughs> <laughs> Bastille's, I'm pretty sure, R&B. 
like pop. Is it, are they R and B? Okay, I don't know. Do you guys know who Bastille is? Yeah, that's I, the Pompeii song. Yeah. 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 There, I I remember like people were like, you know, whenever they were trying to figure out who the vocalist was, like everybody and their moms were like, "Bro, it's got to be Bastille." <laughs> It's gotta be Bastille doing a, I'm like doing a metal band. I'm that I'm envisioning Pompeii in my head right now, and it, like, I kind of, I think I kind of see it actually. No, it's it's honestly, if listen to any of his music and then listen to Sleep Token back, back to back, and you'll I'm, be like, I'm gonna have to do. I that. don't know. Uh, I don't well, know. I've never kind of similar. In. I've never dipped in, so I would I would not have known that. No, that that was the first thing that stood out to me. I was like, well, his voice is very distinctive. I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know if I like it, but it's really distinctive. And, but that's really important. Yeah. That's really, really, really important. Yes. So yeah. yeah, whether or not that you like them, you know, if you know who they are the moment they play, that's all that mm-hmm. fucking matters. Yeah. Sleep token is the dark chocolate of metal. <laughs> So, that. so for let's let's continue with this analogy then. Who's the milk chocolate? Who's the milk chocolate? Oh, Who's that'd be milk I, that'd milk probably be Bad, bad Omen. Bad, or Bad, bad Omen, yeah. Day Bring Seeker. In. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I get. I get. Yeah. I would. I would put that in that in that category. Who, if you want to ask, who's the who's the uh, the chocolate with like the citrus? It's definitely uh, Spearbox. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Orange chocolate? <laughs> nah, dude. Orange nah, chocolate. Dude, don't don't disrespect Courtney like that, bro. Come on, <laughs> dude. I, I, hey, listen. I love. I actually love orange uh, and chocolate together. So. Oh really? Uh, I'm not. I, I usually get those. Um, those like uh, chocolate oranges from, uh, like the UK, but they usually sell them at like Whole Foods stores. Mm. Nah, Courtney. Actually, no, no, no. I, I take it back. I take it back. Shit, they're not, Spearbox isn't the isn't the orange chocolate. They're the, they're the spicy chocolate. Spicy <laughs> chocolate? Okay. I was yeah. gonna say uh, the the, the, the spicy strawberries chocolate. the strawberries dipped in the fondue. That's Courtney. <laughs> that's Courtney for me. I, you know, I think nah, I'm on. The, I'm on that one. I'm on that one. Chocolate yeah, orange, strawberry so? Spearbox. I see that one. Strawberries, dude. Okay, so, so you guys just obviously haven't had spicy chocolate then. That, no. that, that's just, that, no, that's no, just all that. So. That's what tells it. That's what it tells me. <laughs> What's spicy chocolate? Is that just like boozy chocolate? Yeah, it's it's definitely some boozy ass chocolate for sure. Yeah, you can probably find a lot of that like in Mexico and stuff. Yeah, if you get there's there's oh, tons yeah. of some like t- some tahini chocolate. Dude, they don't right. fucking play over there with the with those candies. <laughs> one of my oh, uh, one of my coworkers brought one of those to work a few months back, and I I tried it. it wasn't for me. Like I didn't dislike it but definitely too spicy <laughs> I, I fucking love spicy food I, I i will eat like thai food every day if i could not even fucking around i've literally have eaten pad thai medium chicken for breakfast that is uh awesome actually it's baller not even gonna lie i've done that too <laughs> it's probably yeah, it's all because the of fucking him. the fucking it purges you for the whole day except for that whole part Actually, you know what? Actually, that leads me to a really funny story about Donnie in Nashville. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we God. Were recording, <laughs> we were recording the Detriment EP. Yes, the breakfast place, dude. We went over to this breakfast place before we started recording. And <laughs> we we go over and uh, we we go up to this lady and we're, you know, we're in Nashville. We're trying to have a good time. And this late, this lady, uh, you know, we see Nashville hot something on the menu. It was like a Nashville hot breakfast. Um, yep. And, you know, so we both order it. And the lady was just like, are you sure? And we were like, yeah, I mean, we can, we can take our spice. We didn't think Nashville hot was going to be like that crazy. Cause it's Nashville. I don't know. Like if I hear, if I hear other types of hot, like, you know, like, I don't know, like Mexican and hot, Asian, spicy, that sort of thing. That's when I know, like, what I'm getting into, and I'm like, nah, I can't do it, you know? But Nashville Hot, we were just like, yeah, fuck it, let's go. And I just remember, I think I ate, like, dude, I, I remember eating, like, two or three bites, and I tapped out. You ate your whole breakfast crying. Well, I, so, <laughs> so I, think, I, think, I think, actually, I, I think I was the only one that got it, and I just gave you a bite of it, and you were like, oh, fuck. Is that what happened? Pretty yeah, sure. did I, ta- yeah, did yeah, I yeah. tap yeah, out? Yeah, because you... Cause you got, cause you got the regular. I'm pretty sure you got the regular chicken one, and I was like, nah, I'm gonna get the fucking Nashville one. Nah, you and know, then... I remember, 
I remember I came to Nashville balling. So like the, my memory was, is that I bought it and I was like, fuck it. I'm just getting something else. <laughs> that that just, that just explains why, like how fucking hot it was. You think that you had a whole sandwich when really you just had a bite of mine and just lost it. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, no, it was, it was fucking over, <laughs> but I, I ate my whole fucking thing. And I, I kid you not that whole day. I was just out of the recording room. Like I was just laying in bed, like trying to sleep off this spicy fever that i had or so i don't know what it was it was just i was yeah. ruined bro i was the ruined. rest of the day this dude was ruined he could not it, no. he i think you were only in like the the session for like maybe an hour and a half through for yeah, the whole yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i and if you guys wanted to talk to me i was just from the toilet honestly any recommendations <laughs> i was like i was like yeah yeah just you just call me <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember I remember point. you were in the bathroom. I remember you were in the bathroom for like an hour and a half. You go and you take a shower, you come back out, and then like you were there for <laughs> another 30, 40 minutes and then went back. And I was just like, damn dude, I'm like, this dude's wrecked right now. This dude's oh, yeah. going through oh, yeah. it. <laughs> good good oh, to yeah. hear you survived. <laughs> lot, lots of lots of showers were had, lots so, of bathrooms. Lessons lots, lots of bathrooms perhaps. So did, did any of that like <laughs> like distress like make it onto the recording? Like <laughs> Like, like, like the anxiety or whatever. No, no, no it, it, it didn't. the The only thing that the only thing that did make it onto the recording was the fact that I got super high with uh, Cowboy Killer on the patio, and then yeah. I like because I think we were working on Paradise at the time. Oh no, it was Hollow. You, oh, Hollow. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Hollow. And yeah. um, and there's the there's like the synth part that happens at the beginning. And if you guys are familiar with Hollow, it's like it, it it's like a bam, 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 da, da, and then it has like a synth that's like cut up at the beginning. So at, originally we just had like a straight synth go through the whole thing, but I got super blasted with fucking Cowboy Killer on the patio, and then I I walk into the room and I hear it and I'm like, guys, I know I'm blitzed, but just hear me out. <laughs> and it made it on the record. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. That was so funny because yeah. you yeah, I remember I remember John was chopping it up too. And then you were like, no, 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 but this part it's gonna like fade back in and you know all this. And but like it was yep. the way you were saying it. I was just dying the entire time. I just kept laughing at you. <laughs> but I'm like, yo, this did sound sick. So like I'm just rolling with it. I I'm actually I'm super known for just coming up with like off the wall shit in the recording studio. Like all the time, I'm I'm the one that's like, all right, guys, this may be a jump, but let's try it. And then we just like take like a whole fucking synth part, and we'll mush it oh, down to yeah. like one measure and reverse it and use that. it as a transition. Oh. Yes, this is like I was acid rap that or something. Exact story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Uh, I'm definitely the off the wall kind of. Kind of I'll, I'll never forget. I'll never forget that night. That I think it was me, you, and Steven, and you told me to do. Hey, that it was 16, Lamont. That oh Lamont, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Hey, take that sixteen bar synth part that you just made, put it down to two bars, and then reverse it and pitch it or something and this and that. It, I I was like, bro, yeah. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> it was. It was. I think. I think what it was. It, it was like crunching crunching a sixteen bar down to literally one measure and then reversing it and then adding a lo-fi filter on it and then yeah, like ramping using it, it up as a into yeah <laughs> yeah and it was sick <laughs> and we were like i had to, actually I, I, had to like, cool. I had to like crack logic to learn it like i had to like i had to like go and look up tutorials and like how to take something like that and put it down that much because it's like i don't know how you do that and it still sounds you know normal yeah yeah, yeah. well that's the wild thing about that like some of that stuff it's like even if you're blitzed it's you know, as long as you're creating music and it it sounds good, and sometimes you get like really unique stuff from it. So, I get wild that like kind of mental state you could. Yeah, get. we're we're always yeah. experimenting with uh with drugs. Like, <laughs> oh, not yet, drugs. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was. I'm a nerd. We're very we're very I'm experimental just... band. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Uh, no, we're we're always experimenting with like synths and like uh, just different effects and and all of that uh, sort of stuff. Like 
all the fucking time. Like, I, like the production for us is like a, a very big part of like the band, but you know, we, it's not like a, a thing that like we're relying on. It's more of like a, you know, like a, a way to sort of like shape songs and create like, it's like an cooler accent vibes piece, than, so to say. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. You know, kind of, you know, but sometimes it does take the forefront too, you know, I don't know. I'm grouping like, synth you know and like all that into one and like effects and like all that stuff but we like to do like really like cool stuff with that all all the time and and i i definitely think that like going on we're going to be doing even more like i can't wait to like get myself into a room with like analog synths and start figuring that out because Mm -hmm. that's that's the thing that's going to crack the fucking code for sure yeah yeah absolutely Wow. Right, I want to I want to bring it back to when you guys released Killjoy, the debut single that you guys put out under Spirit Leaves. And then you guys signed to Invogue Records like pretty shortly after that. Mm-hmm. And I, it's not very often I feel like that bands put out their debut single and then you're getting a call from a record label saying, hey, we like you sort of thing. So like, how did that feel to you guys to like like within like a couple months of putting out like your first song under spirit leaves and you're already in talks with a label like and then actually signing the deal like how did that feel so to say so so i i I love this question because it was actually um something that we discussed as a band prior to putting out killjoy the whole point of putting out killjoy was to get a record label deal and i i literally told all the like all of the bandmates that we were gonna get a record label deal from the song. <laughs> Damn, that's <laughs> massive yeah, confidence. I, and it I was, uh, I was not under under that impression. I was being more like, no, nah, I'm like, you know, maybe after the EP comes out, maybe you know that that you know if this thing does well enough and all that, you know, something will happen and blah blah blah. But then like we put out the song, you know, and we just kind of played our chips right, uh, and you know, it started it started doing well, like better than we thought it was gonna do. And then, and then, yeah, we got hit up, and it was just like, oh shit, like this is okay. It's actually this is happening. A thing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember it was yeah, like I, I don't know exactly when, but it was like pretty shortly after Killjoy came out that it just randomly popped up into my YouTube recommended feed, and I was like, damn, that's that's pretty good. You were the yeah, one to cool. show us, right? Jake? I think so. Yeah, it's all your fault. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the the whole the You're whole thing the Killjoy is that. We we wanted to like we wanted to truly in, encapsulate like a tr- like our one hundred percent vision, and we like went balls to the wall with it. Like we for our music video, we wanted because like I've been in bands so many times where I wasn't able to accurately portray what I was visually seeing for a song. You know whether whether it was like budget or, or something like that. Like we we weren't able to make it happen. So with this, like the ideology behind it was if we can make people see what we are seeing, then people will latch onto it. And that's that's why the Killjoy music video looks so fucking dope is because we were able to actually 100 percent get our full vision out and let people see like the potential of what this could really be. And I think that was one of the reasons, too. Yeah, I think it was a lot of buildup, you know, there was a lot of things that we did like meticulously that like, you know, we, we've kind of learned from being in different projects and we've put out songs without promoting them and we've done this and that and the other, you know, we made all the mistakes. And so we were just like, okay, you know, like this time, you know, if we're going to do this band, we got to, we got to actually, right. you know, yeah, exactly. Put some structure to it and like, you know, no, like have a release plan, have these sorts of things, have, you know, have pr- promotion and, you know, and advertising and this and that and the other and like, Stuff that like you know we we know that we needed to do in the past, but like we just we just didn't or whatever reason you know we didn't have the money or this and that and this and that and the other and you know with this project we were like we're not doing that we're gonna do things like the way that we need to do them like we we had the EP done uh like the whole EP was done uh for a long time uh by the time that Killjoy came out um so we were really just holding on to that music at that point and just really kind of trying to get everything else together for it so this thing could come out the way that it needed to um and uh yeah it ended up uh working out pretty good you know so <laughs> yep. no no corners cut on that one yeah it helps that the music you guys are putting out is really good also so 
Yeah, I right. mean, we always yeah. believed well, in our music. I, yeah. You know, I think we we've been working to all working together for a long time, like in different projects, and we all were like, "You're fucking dope," you know. And and then you know, Donnie be like, "You're fucking dope," and blah blah, blah and this and that, you know. Like, um, we all came from different projects and came together, you know, under the belief that like we could make something really good. And you know, that's that's kind of uh, I think that I think that's one of the reasons why I can still listen to our music, even though I've heard it nine billion times and a half. Um, and you know, there's some days that I, that I don't like it, but then there's other days that I put it on and the immediate thing I keep thinking to myself is, man, I, I just want to see the reactions of other people listening to this, you know, or it's, that's, that's like something I, I think about all the time. Cause I'm like, I just know the shit's good, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, it, it's, you know, that like, we, we it's definitely nice all be proud of your, of what we were doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's definitely nice to be like proud of, a of an artwork piece, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, so, definitely proud of uh, of of detriment. Yeah, it was a fantastic yeah. EP. I know Justin and I in particular really enjoyed it. Um, I think it was my top three EP of last year. I did. I have I have heard huh. that. I have I, actually I've listened to everything you guys have said about us from detriment to empty flame. <laughs> so yes, I, I have been secretly in the background like, oh, cool. I showed my girlfriend Hell too. Yeah. I was like, I was like, babe, I was like, yo, look what they're saying about this. Yeah. So just so you guys know, <laughs> we appreciate Super it. Appreciate it. We're just a bunch of dudes that like music and uh, it's, I won't cool shut up to... about it. <laughs> it's cool that we I get mean, to, to be, talk to, to be honest with you. It, so. Yeah, no, to be honest with you, it's, it's funny. Cause like, you know, we, we've had some people talk about our music and we've seen like, you know, some written articles or things like that, but obviously like I listen to a lot of podcasts and, I, you know, and like the way I consume media is like that. So whenever I hear, you know, like a group of people t talking about like something that I, that I made, I'm like immediately rushing to it. Cause like, honestly, there's not enough people talking about us. <laughs> so if you're here, I would agree. Make I would agree. <laughs> yeah. That's what we like to do I'm with this not... thing. We like to highlight bands that are, I mean, we've talked to some bigger artists as well, but we like to talk to bands that we think are like really talented and just we think deserve a bigger audience. And you guys are definitely one of those. So. Well, thank you. I, I seriously appreciate that. Absolutely. I agree. We have, we gonna, have a bunch of. <laughs> I want to potentially make a weird transition here into talking about music festivals. Uh, as we're recording this, uh, Rockville uh, has started announcing its lineup. And I don't, as far as I'm aware, you guys haven't been announced for it yet. But it's, it's like, I think the biggest rock and metal festival that happens in florida or maybe one of the biggest in the across the entire united states have you guys ever been to rockville and or how close do you think you guys are to actually playing at that festival maybe they can't say well, <laughs> well yeah if i it, well unfortunately we can say something uh, we have not been reached out by by anybody i would love to uh unless not unless donnie knows but i uh <laughs> Yeah, no, we have not been reached out um, to play Rockville. That'd be really fucking cool. Um, last year, we were at Rockville. We were not inside the festival. I know that Geo went, um, but we were actually uh, out there last year passing out flyers for an after-party show um, that we were playing. Not last year, I'm sorry, this year, um, this past year. Yeah. We were outside of the festival passing out flyers for an after-party show to see if we could get some like Thousands extra people. Thousands of flyers. Yeah, that like yeah, we were passing out flyers for hours. So we did that for I think it was two days, right? That we did yeah. that? Yeah. So that's what yeah. we were doing. We were we were on the ground doing some old school like warp tour shit, you know, mm -hmm. just trying to get people to come out and come see us, you know, after they just spent eight hours in the heat. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, they those people fucking hated us. They looked like zombies. They were like, fuck your band. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about your band right now. I just want to go home. Yeah. Hey, if if we got uh, if we got like five percent of those people to come, you know, that was a that that was for us a, a success. Mm. You know, see if they mm. if they yeah, fuck yeah. with us. Like, so yeah, that was you know we we really hit the ground running on uh trying to get that you know all done. And I would totally do it again. Uh, but yeah, if I could play Rockville, I would fucking do that right away. I've I've been to Rockville a few times and. uh it's it's fucking dope. Rockville's Rockville's sick. I would love to play. I do I do all the booking for for Spirit Leaves, so um, you know, I would be the first to know if we uh got the invite or not. But <laughs> definitely have, not not yet, but in, soon. In Virginia, we have uh, Blue Ridge 
and uh, not anymore. I, I'm not sure. If you guys heard about that one? Connecticut Ooh. had Capulet Fest. Not anymore. And yeah. Canada has nothing. Yeah, man. What the hell you happened? Just get, with all you just that? get all the shows that I <laughs> yeah, want to go to. All the tours go to Toronto, but like, I don't feel like Canada has any big festivals. Mm. They yeah. had one. It was like it was like all my friends fest or something. It was like all American rejects, but Billy Talon. It was more like emo than than metal. Yeah, I think a lot of those bands have more reach in that regard. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it, it's funny because you know, while while metal while metalcore is becoming like pretty you know mainstream, especially these days. Uh, yeah, I, I still feel like that that reach that like emo bands have isn't exactly felt the same way when you yeah. when you step into that yeah. realm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's it's like it's like just kind of like an unfortunate uh byproduct of it being a little bit more niche, I would say, you know. Mm -hmm. I think I think like I think screaming like in general has gotten a lot of I would say good press with people. Like it's like a lot of people are now used to it. I would say, you know, the people that yeah. used to hate it are now just kind of used to it. And like, that's kind of like a thing. Like, dude, I have people from high school, like reaching out to me about spirit leaves that I'm like, you like this now? I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I used to get made fun of like for wearing toms and like, you know, fucking listening to sleeping with sirens or whatever. And mm -hmm. now they're like totally into all of that. And I'm like, okay, well, we've made some ground, you know, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. really, that's really good. You know, because yeah. back in the day, at least when I was growing up, it was just like it was it was subculture. Like it just was not yeah, it was yeah, not yeah, mainstream. True. It was that super like subculture or Even like, like a few it was years the ago. Well, you would always like group it with like goth, like emo. Yeah. It was like always like this um derogatory term that nowadays just feels like it's kind of mixed with mainstream. Yeah. Dep depending on like who you talk to. Like now, like I, I meet like a like the, the people that I meet that still are kind of like that, they they always sing the uh, because tonight will be the night. That I will fall you. <laughs> they always do that TikTok. They start doing that, and but they're like supportive of it in a weird way. Like people that I meet that only listen to rap, they'll like you know do shit like that, but they're like supportive of it. They're like, yeah, that's cool. Like back in the day, it was like I feel like it was more of a separation. Maybe it's just you know high school or whatnot. But like yeah, there was a there was a bit more of like a a, a separation between that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. I think we're seeing a lot more like genre fusion now, which is probably why um, we're getting more coverage. Yeah, I more guess. of that recognized. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that and like, you know, just the consistency of, I think, people that are, you know, out, out there, like the, the, the consistency of bands that have like made their way to those groups of people, you know, because of, you know, your friend or whatever that showed you this or, you know, this and that, you know, just all that sort of stuff. And, you know, you see that over a number of years and then slowly but surely like that part of metal or that form of metal sort of becomes the main, like, you know, the main thing of metal now, you know, like back in the eighties, it was Metallica. And now it's, you know, it's the day to remember, you know, that's what, you know, a lot of older people know about, they know about that band or they know about, you know, my chemical romance or something, but um you know it's just the natural progression i would say yeah like i remember my mom would listen to fallout boy in the early 2000s like when i was growing up as a kid and now she's like full-on country music is like all she listens to for the most she knows about like they fallout boy like those early 2000s rock bands that were all over the radio like yeah my dad my dad uh what is it he one of the first cds that i i, I ever i ever bought i, I think it was I don't know. I, I think the first CD I ever bought was Mesmerized by System of a Down, but I do remember mm. my dad bringing home American Idiot by Green Day because that yeah. just, man, when that album came out, that was that just fucking took over everything. Oh my god, it was so immediate how quick that album blew up. I uh, I didn't get too much into music, but I would always go and play um, Tony Hawk American Wasteland. And like that soundtrack is probably still like one of my favorite video game soundtracks. Oh yeah, because it blends a I lot was... of that like punk rock and kind of uh, um, emo rock that style. Was, that was the I what love that game. I, yeah, I love that game too. I was an underground kid. I, I did have American Wasteland, but I think I was mostly an underground kid. That that game took over my life when that came oh, out. Oh yeah, I had, I had, I had, I had all of them, bro. 
I had I had all of them. I had I had Tony Hawk's Predator, Pro Skater One, Two, Three, Underground, American Wasteland. For the the moment that you were able to get off your board and and walk around, that was wild. Oh, so good. You know? Yeah. I remember. I mean, you know, like the, like those games, like put on some amazing bands. Like I mean, for example, like I would say Tony Hawk, put like for me, uh, gave me Motorhead. For example, mm-hmm. I didn't know who Motorhead was until Tony Hawk. I didn't know yeah, who sure. Goldfinger was until Tony Hawk, you know? I would say it was like, Guitar Hero know. for me. Oh, mm. yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Me, yeah. Me too, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like a culture of music back in the 2000s. Uh, but yeah, Guitar Hero is where it got me. I just remember, I still remember uh, walking into. I think it was like a local video game shop. I don't even think it was a, like a GameStop or anything. And they just had it on the TV with the guitar out. They just had it there. And it was sitting there and we were like, what is this? And they were like, oh, it's this new game, Guitar Hero. And I was like, okay, you know, blah, blah. And then they show us this game. And I remember, I think it was my dad who played it first. And I think he clicked with it immediately. And then and I remember seeing it and it all just made sense. Like everything about it made sense. And then I, I get the guitar I start playing it, and I think that was the night that I was like, I want to play music for, like, the rest of my life. Like, this is so cool. <laughs> it was I just wish like, that, was how you, was, that was how you got into playing music was Guitar Hero. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would, I would totally credit Guitar Hero with that. I mean, like, it was just, like, seeing the, the people, like, on the screen, and you see that, like, virtual crowd, and then the music was really good, and I had never heard any of this music, you know. A lot of it was like oldies and stuff but like man i discovered so much music because of that game and um yeah no that was it was just this amalgamation of stuff where i was just like this is the coolest fucking shit ever i want to be a fucking rock star like that's what i want to fucking hmm. i have a question know. actually i grew up on only nintendo games and nintendo games only. <laughs> <laughs> me too honestly <laughs> um but hey man, I, bro, we, we are nintendo fanatics me and zyla both we literally wrote a whole ass album together based on nintendo games that's yes, it. if that you ever want to awesome. check out my solo, if you ever want to check out my solo music, go check out Lost in Delfino. It's literally, uh, it's it's literally <laughs> like video game pop. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Zylo and I just like fucking got together for a summer and just like wrote a whole ass Nintendo based R and B album. I'm uh, saving Taking notes. Taking notes. Yeah, sa- saving that to send to Derek as well. Oh so yeah, sure. yeah. It's funny. I'm sure he'll be the one who'll, who'll like it more than most of us. Oh yeah, go 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 check out uh, Zylo. I got uh, a whole 77 monthly listeners, but you know what? Like it's you know, it's 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 a hidden treasure. I feel like it's going to be one of those things that Lost in Delfino is going to blow up a lot later. <laughs> it's it's going to be like 10 years, and then people are going to discover it and be like, "Yo, this shit was kind of slick." 20, 25 like, year anniversary you of Super know. Mario Sunshine. That shit's popping. Yeah, sure. man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what's funny is I replayed Mario Sunshine after making Lost in Delfino, and I just remember saying Sunshine was my favorite Mario game. Sunshine was my favorite, and then Nintendo released that All Stars collection. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and I replayed all of the games, and and I replayed Mario Sunshine, and it was my by far my least favorite in that collection. <laughs> that <laughs> final <laughs> volcano level yeah. is dog. Yeah, dude, That's it was so funny. dog. I was so fucking frustrated for like a good half of that game that pachinko machine level oh fuck that level dude i that that thing can go fuck itself yeah so what what's actually interesting about that is like xylo was more into like super mario and everything like that i was more of like bringing in the legend of zelda stuff to the album so like anytime like some like we would come up with something i would always kind of reference like legend of zelda melodies (laughs) Or yeah, like no, I, I, of Zelda, like yeah. sound sound effects, you know. Yeah, actually, I was the always, album. I gotta be honest with you, like I played, you know, I played Twilight Princess. I played. I have never beat Ocarina of Time. I played like a good bit of it. Um, uh, played all of Breath of the Wild. That's where I think I truly fell in love with Zelda. I've always really been into the music of Zelda, but the yes. games themselves, but some of them is some of them have passed me by. Yeah, Koji Koji Kondo fucking cooks every time he touches a Zelda game. Yeah. Well, I use well, a lot of Zelda did, music in the videos I edit for other YouTube creators. It's just so good. It just makes yeah. it like a perfect oh, yeah. backing track. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you listen to that album and like we're telling you this now, 
like you're gonna hear all of the references like low key and high key like they're it's placed all throughout and then there's also one song that has like a donkey kong sound effect in there <laughs> well i still i still so see, we, it, was, thing, it I, wasn't on purpose it wasn't yeah, on purpose I still don't but know like, if it, that's if that's the the actual sample but it's totally it though <laughs> yeah you'll you'll hear it just just give the give the album a listen to and you'll be like you're gonna be like what the fuck they did actually this you randomly. know what here's since we're talking about uh cool video game inspired soundtracks we should we should mention one uh, an, uh, an ep that like really inspired uh what is it like us in terms of like sounds and all that uh what is it the like Metroid. what ep by penny sun no 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 that oh that yeah yeah, what yeah. Was, what was you guys again? Know. You cut out a little bit when you said that. What was that? Oh, it's called the EP is called "Like What" by Tenny Sun. If you're gonna listen to any piece of music, you need to go fucking listen to that after this. It's phenomenal. Yep, taking more it's notes. So good. Yep, I'm saving that yep. for later tonight. Oh, that 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 dude, Tenny Sun has influenced. I mean, I, he'll he influences Spirit Leaves. Let's be fucking honest here. Like that, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. that dude is crazy. Yeah, like what by Tenny Sun, dude. That is one of the most. You know, you know, you know what's interesting? What's interesting about this is that whenever, like, whenever we were conceptualizing Spirit Leaves, because we're obviously whenever we were like, you know, creating this band and we created the name and everything like that, the first concept that we had, it wasn't like R and B metal or R and B new metal or whatever. The first concept was Studio Ghibli Metal. That was no. like that was like the first concept that we we discussed, and then uh, it it didn't actually ever make it to the final product. But I still kind of hold on to that idea, and I do think that one of the albums is going to be a little bit more nostalgic and magical than the rest. I'll say. I that. love how nerdy you guys are. I fuck with it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. No, no, it's a it's a it's, it's, it's honestly like we're we're a bunch of fucking nerds who who make metalcore music. That's really kind of what what this band is. Yeah. <laughs> we don't yeah, we don't talk about it enough. I will say that. We don't. We kind of tone tone down the the nerdy stuff a lot. Um you know, in terms of like how we present ourselves, but we are the most like we're the biggest fucking nerds. Nice. Oh yeah. All four of us are fairly nerdy as well. Like I know yeah, Justin, I mean, you do a lot of D and D shit. We we all do yep. our Pokemon Nuzlocks together. Jake and I have been playing Overwatch for years and years. Uh we I, we all met each other playing Minecraft, like <laughs> Yeah. Yep. I actually what is wow. it? I my wow. dream my <laughs> my big dream with this band, Donnie knows this. My big dream with this band is for this band to blow up. We have our career, we do our run, you know, we get like, you know, our five albums out or something like that, you know, the five good ones. Um, cause I, I always, I have this thing where I say that like bands are only capable of making five great albums. And then after that, it's just kind of over. Um, yeah. even if you still keep releasing music. Um, so like, I'm like, all right, let's go on our five album run, do our thing. And then, uh, I want to actually make a video game when I'm, when I'm older and I, and I know That's exactly nice. what video I make. Let me guess hollow night, something like hollow night. <laughs> no it's not uh it's actually sonic everybody adventure goes for <laughs> sonic adventure for just the chow garden though because sega won't do it oh no if i make sonic adventure 3 the chow garden is going in the fucking game there's no fucking oh, question yeah. about it yeah no i i would i would like make that like a whole little thing because if you think about it here's the thing here's how you fucking pitch that okay in 2024 you go hey sega we're gonna add the chow garden back but it's a thing that's going to keep players keep coming back to the game. You're going to have a consistent player base and a consistent stream of players that are always going to come. And then we can even add packs. And it's just like immediately people are going to, they're going to fucking flock to that because that's just dollar signs. Not yeah, that I'm not that I'm in support of microtransactions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that I'm in support I mean, of that. Shit. I hate I all mean, of that stuff, but you but know, it works. Hey, it works. It works, yeah. You know, it's uh, it's why um, SA two is still like one of the most played Sonic games. It's mostly just because of the Jail Garden, but it's also still a really good game. Oh yeah, no, I, I, dude, honestly, I fuck with the Jail Garden so hard. I, I, yeah, that's one of my favorite little features, and and I would totally expand every single facet of that because you know you have twenty years of video game stuff that's come out since then. I mean, Animal Crossing is a thing, right? You know, it's like, all right, so what do you? 
what do you take from that and put, you know, into Chow Garden? Anyways, we're going to totally get off topic if I keep talking about this because I will. I will. <laughs> He's going deep right now. Um, yeah. Did you guys, like, were you guys interested in music, like, in school? Because I know for me personally, like, I didn't even, I didn't really like music in school because I, I guess none of the stuff we were, we were doing was interesting to me like not my genre or whatever but you mean, you I, mean like very... uh, like band and like orcas orchestral stuff yeah yeah, like, like, yeah sort of like... no not me personally i was actually more of a, a theater kid okay. um yeah i would do like uh we me and uh I, we had like a theater class in my high school and like uh me and a, a group of my friends we took the class because we were like making like like comedy skits and stuff and we would actually it started out because like we would make like school projects together, me and like some friends and I had a camera and uh, I, we would go and like shoot videos for these projects, but then we would splice in like things of comedy in these videos, you know, like the kids would laugh and, you know, that was gratifying and whatnot. And so, you know, we all took theater under like, cause like, you know, it was like, okay, well now we can just take our comedy skits to this and do this all the time and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And like, that was like a thing that we did uh, in my sophomore year. Um, and then, uh, and then I moved to Miami, and that's where I started my first metal band. And then that that kind of all went away. But yeah, no, I was much more of a theater kid. Never really did like uh, band stuff in um, in, high, in high school. I I I attempted. So whenever whenever I was in elementary school, I had a friend named Haley Byrne. She uh she had a um like a a garage shitty drum kit in her garage, and um we would like jam out with her guitar and like me on the drums and we would sound like shit for hours. And then I remember one time, this is, this is the chase that, that I keep chasing by the way, for music. I uh, remember one time we were, I was trying to play a groove or whatever. And then I did a fill and I matched up with her. I syncopated. And that was the first time I, I had ever like synced up at the same time. And then I like came back in. And then I remember we both looked at each other and like this most like, this awe face we both had whenever we looked at each other we're just like oh my god we just did something you know like that that like that feeling of creating something for the first time mm -hmm. is yeah. something that i've always chased and i've constantly chased that feeling harder and harder throughout my career as a as a drummer was to like feel that feeling again mm. yeah um, i did it i did attempt to uh to be a part of my middle school band but um our music director was a complete douche and he wouldn't let me play the drums he said i could play anything else but the drums yeah. and so i told him to go fuck himself literally <laughs> I <did that. laughs> and uh, i got i got a little in trouble for that and i ran away um and then uh and then in high school i finally got into jazz band and i played like a bunch of fucking i, I was like one of the only i think there was like three drummers or something like that and then we did like big, I did like big band jazz for basically all four years of my high school until my senior year when they kicked me out because, not because I was bad, but because my grades were ass and they told me that I had to do both marching band and jazz band. And I was like, I can't, I have a job and a band outside of this. So there's no way I can like do the marching band. And so, yeah, they were like, well, it's been real, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's really it. And I mean, I had I had bands like all like kind of growing up too. I always like was creating bands with my friends and th things like that as well. You know, just like little yeah, projects here and there. The band, the bands that we would always say we're going to play a show and then we would design flyers and all that stuff. But then we never we never really did. <laughs> That was that was me up until my junior year. I just played a show. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. Like well, so, was... so many children that grow up thinking they want to be musicians, they have these big aspirations, but then they get to the step of actually doing it, and then that's when it clicks that, like, oh, this is actually a lot harder than you think. Like, yeah. you just have that childhood innocence of, I'm going to be a musician, without really thinking about, like, how much effort it actually takes. Yeah, I had I... An, an acoustic guitar growing up for, like, three out of four years of my high school 
Uh, and I just never played it. Every time I picked it up, I it just looked too complicated, so I put it back down. Yeah, I I think I was always I was always extremely dedicated, and like that's all I would do. It would like it would take precedence over homework and everything else, uh, and um, you know, singing, playing guitar, learning how to record, things like that. Um, but uh, I think my like the biggest thing was finding people who were just as serious about it too. And even by the time like I moved to Miami, like getting my band to practice and do stuff was just a pain in the ass. So, yeah, it was um, I feel like that's always kind of kind of the issue. Yeah. A lot of people a lot of people are not prepared for like how much time and effort that it takes, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then like real life stuff starts happening to people. You know, you get a mm-hmm. girlfriend, you get this and that and the other. And, and it's like, dude, like trying to get other people to adjust to that it's really hard even like today like me you know like let's 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 get into some real weeds here about being a musician like you know like uh you know me and my girlfriend we we're we're always constantly trying to figure out like where we can you know find time for us you know because like the band is like you know sometimes you know things just happen and like we just need to go do it now you know and that's that's just a part of like being in a band and i i I truly believe that like 95 to 99 percent of people in this world are they're just not they're not ready for that, you know, um, when when it actually becomes a thing, you know. I think a lot of people like the idea of playing music and like in their free time, it, it's a very fulfilling thing. And then when it becomes a job, it's like, oh, shit, yeah. there's not yeah. a lot of money yeah. and it takes up all my fucking time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I was like I was the musician that would like would rather go homeless and have their drum set still than sell my drum set to have a home like that's the kind of musician i've always been yeah the last thing i will sell is my music equipment the last thing yeah yeah even the ps5 buddy even the ps5 i'll sell all of it dude (laughs) ps5 xbox switch i'll fucking surely you have like a local like pc gaming center like gaming shop where you can go and play games like i know i have a barcade that's like five minutes from where i live i'm pretty lucky to have one so close but like, oh really there's, oh there's... i i don't I have know. no idea about that we yeah i i'm gonna be yeah, honest it's, it's an arc it's an arcade that has a bar that's 21 up oh, really oh we have we have that yeah yeah, 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 we have player that. One. yeah. Uh, i guess oh, I, I guess it's only me and my group of friends that call them barcades then Sorry, I thought you were talking about like uh like land party shops where like there there were like oh, those yeah. like back, like back in the day I think like they, they still exist. I'm pretty sure they still exist, but I haven't been to one in forever. Yeah, yeah, I don't. So I don't. Why know. why why would those exist? That doesn't make any sense. There's online now. Like <laughs> there's online have, now. But... We have one by I where I live that converted into a uh like a VR uh hub, so oh, like where you just go and play yeah. VR and all that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. That is what kind of what they would be now if you were to if you were to go and do those things. Yeah, you can't just go to a shop and just go, go play a PS5 with a set amount of games, you know. Mm-hmm. Although that would be sick. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the Halo 2 LAN parties. Um there used to be the shop. It was called I think it was called Xscape. Yeah, and they just had like a ton of Xboxes like in this shop and like kids would come and pay like a set amount of money and we would just play Halo all night and have a ton of candy and Mountain Dew. And it was probably not safe, but we did it anyways. (laughs) Fun times. Fun times, yeah. All right, well, um, we kind of gone through most of our talking points that we wanted to hit up with you guys going into this uh, episode here. Uh, is there anything else that you guys want to talk about with us uh, before we call this episode a wrap? Yeah, yeah I, uh, I, would, I have I have one thing. Go for it. Yeah, me and Zyla don't listen to metal. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that that is a thing. Yeah, yeah, we don't actually <laughs> listen to a lot of metal though. Um, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, uh, you know, in terms of uh, band centric stuff. Uh, so just a just to let you guys know, we do have another song coming out uh, after this one. Um, and uh, that one's going to be super fun. And uh, if you guys have been watching the music videos, uh, I don't know if it's like apparent to you guys all at this point, but there has been a story that's been kind of being told. And 
that's all going to finish up uh, when this next song comes out. We were and, talking uh, about that I, before. I knew <laughs> there was going to be. I, I went back and was like, that seems similar to uh, Pulling Teeth. I'm like, nah, it's, it's just coincidence. No, it's not. It's not a coincidence. <laughs> God damn Everything it. is cohesive. Yeah. Nice. But this will be, but this will essentially, like, at, at the end of everything, this is essentially going to be the end of what we're going to call the Detriment era. Um, you know, the Detriment EP plus these new songs that are coming out. Uh, that's that's going to, that song is going to be the the final just thing in the, you know, the final thing. And then we're going to be moving on to other stuff. Potentially a debut album, hopefully. We're working mm. on it. I'll, we'll I'll, see. I'll, 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 I can confirm that. I can confirm that. We're working on it. We've been working on it. Yeah. Nice. Take all the time you need on it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and and I want to I want to expand on the fact that we don't we don't listen to metal music. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Do it. The reason the reason why we we're like well at least at least from my end the reason why I'm not listening to metal music it's kind of purposeful. I feel like um, a lot of metal bands are listening to each other right now right mm -hmm. not yeah. every one of them not every one of them i feel like the bigger ones might be on the same train but i feel like a lot of metal bands are kind of listening to other metal stuff and getting influenced by the same metal stuff i i don't think that that's a good idea to get influenced by the same scene i think that if i listen to anything else then i'll be able to influence my metal taste with a bunch of different genres Right. And give metal like a completely different, like influenced side. Right. Than yeah. That, other metal. That makes total sense. Cause like when uh, Death of Peace of Mind from Bad Omens dropped, like about a year or so later, you definitely saw like a shift in like mainstream kind of deriving from and using that as like inspiration from it. And you could definitely tell. Um, it's getting a, for me personally. It was getting a little bit stagnant, kind of referencing that same material. So I definitely, oh, yeah. definitely, um, yeah, you know, agree that you know, you listening to to metalcore, especially when you're in the scene, quite isn't like how you innovate. Right. Definitely the the like inspiration of it, but you guys are yeah. definitely doing well. I definitely I definitely yeah. think that you know there there is a generational shift happening though you know mm -hmm. I think that a lot <clears throat> there's been a lot of bands that have maintained I think their position uh for a, a ton of years and I think are going to be very happy to pass on you know that stuff to the next generation who's been influenced by them and I think that what we're going to see very soon is a I think a big cultural shift in like the type of metal that's being uh made you know I know that like bad omens is like very much leading that charge right now, but I think that that's going to get completely expanded upon. Um, I would even say that the generational shift started happening when the Doom soundtrack came out, because I think that that was the first yeah. time that anybody just got synths in metal right, like or just like EDM music or that sort of electronic blending right. Like it was like mind blowing how far ahead mick gordon was on the curve of that like listening back on it because it is because i mean he's influencing music right now I and mean, he's working with bring me um and i think you're gonna see you know a lot of that going forward i, I think uh genre fusion you know uh you know issues you know, you go back to issues uh, yeah i was like, gonna say issues like they were so far ahead of their time so far ahead of the curve on that For one sure. um you know because they they just kind of were like you know, they just kind of figured something out that like, I don't like, and I think they just did it on accident uh, that like not a lot of other bands were, were doing. Like, I think that a lot of people saw it as a gimmick, but like, no, it was not a gimmick. I mean, if you listen to Beautiful Oblivion, that sound matured into something mm. quite different and quite beautiful, to be honest with you. Like I, and so I, I think going forward, we're going to see, you know, I think we're going to see the music landscape shift. I think that uh, people are getting a little tired of, uh, a lot of you know i think specific trends that are happening and i think that a lot of artistry is really going to blossom um from that in this like new digital age um of social media so i have a lot of hope for inter innovation not just in metal but pretty much in, in all music right now but yeah donnie's absolutely correct like i 
you know, I just love music in general. I think that <clears throat> as a kid, I listened to so much metal and I listened and I was so constrained growing up that when I became an adult, <clears throat> it became very clear to me that it was just like, I just need to branch out and like listen to new things and, and yeah. play new things because like that's really going to help just like me as a musician and stuff. And, you know, falling in love with music in general has been one of the highlights of my adult life um, and not just, you know, straight up loving only metal and whatnot. I felt, I, I just feel like as a musician, you, you become very constrained by those things. And I think uh, creativity, you can't constrain creativity and you have to make stuff that is not for everybody. You have to make something yeah. that is for you first. And you can only discover that if you discover what you like yourself and you're not like going like, Oh, I don't like rap because I just listen to metal. That's just, it's like, all right, dude, that's cool. But like, have you tried listening to it? Like, you know, or try yeah, finding something that, that you might like. I was going to say like, that's, that's good for the listener. Like listeners are like, you can, stick to one genre for the rest of your life and just kind of stick with it but that's not good for an artist i feel like yeah. it, like if you're not branching out to different genres it's just counterproductive at this point i feel like no band has proved that more than bring me oh, yeah. yeah for sure <laughs> yeah yeah they, yeah. Did, they were just like all right we're gonna vibe and then we're gonna vibe in a completely different way on this one it's like okay perfect yeah and everybody but just ate made, that shit you up. Know, I, I think what i like about bring me and I, and I would say that's very, it's very different from like a lot of bands. So like back in the 2010s, you saw so many bands just completely change their sound. Like Fall Out Boy is a great example. They had like some of the, like the best banger emo albums of the 2000s. And then in 2010, they released that Save Rock and Roll album. And it's just a pop album. And it was just kind of like, I think it threw everybody off, you know? And for a long time, you just saw a lot of bands kind of change their sound completely and do this. And yes, they reached way bigger audiences. And they did this. And I think they're, yeah. I think the sentiment was like, nobody likes rock music anymore and stuff like that. But now in the 2020s, we're seeing something happen where everybody's like, no, actually, we always like this music and you guys need to keep making it. But then people that started putting the money behind that, you know, and I think that that's when a lot of bands realized like, oh, shit, we need to go back to this, which is why Fall Out Boy made a rock album again and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. All this is to say the point of, of this is to say that Bring Me Throughout all of this time has always maintained their metal sound. Even if you go listen to Amo and all of that sort of stuff, yes, they were doing all of that, you know, the pop stuff and whatnot and all of their little experimentations with electronic music. But no, but they've always maintained yeah. that sound, you know, even yeah. if it has been different, they've always been themselves. And I think that that translates to fans. And I think that that's why they've been able to maintain the relevancy because they've been able to make music that is caught up with the times, but they've also always been themselves and knew what their, what their market was if we're talking businessy. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think um, I think if you're not in the pursuit of your own autonomy as a band, then you're going to stay stagnant. This is getting deep. <laughs> <laughs> I just I wanted to end it deep, you know. Well, it's it's called the hive mind, you know. We're all That's here to, to share a collective thought, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's all propaganda. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. That's really it. That's really all I had to say. Yeah, no, definitely some good insight. Is, yeah, like I've definitely expanded my horizons these past few years into like alternative pop stuff, and I think I've been better off for it. So I totally agree with those points. But I think it's gonna just about wrap up this episode of Have Mind After Hours. Thank you guys again for joining us, taking time out of your Monday night to talk to us, chat to us about the new song and about your influences and all things Spirit Leaves and all that. So, um, yeah, any last words that you guys want to give before I wrap this up? Um, well, the, the, the this video is probably coming out after the song drops. So go str uh, stream Sky on Fire. Uh, yep. We have a lot of... We have a lot of exciting things coming. Please uh, come see us at a show if you're in Florida or other places potentially because that's going to be happening soon. So Virginia, yeah. North Carolina, yeah. Baltimore. Florida. Yes. Yes. Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm biased. Yeah. Continue. No, no, it's Canada, okay. It's okay. Canada. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll see you up there eventually, buddy. <laughs> eventually. I got to I low key. I got to get my passport. <laughs>
So. Oh man. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's basically that. Oh, and follow us, Spirit Leaves at Fell. But you guys heard that at the beginning, so if you guys yeah. have listened to this whole thing, yeah, make sure to do that. Do it. Oh, and do and it. oh, hold on, one last thing, personal. This is personal. Go listen to the Like What EP by Tenny Son. Your life will be changed. Yep, I got it saved for tonight. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode of the Hive Mind mm-hmm. After Hours podcast. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed, and have a good night. Have a good night, guys. Shwee, how's it going?